Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today I have no voice <coughs> because I'm sick but we will still be finally finishing our Octominer build. So in part one of this video we built it out with four cards because a bigger breakout board was still missing. Now we finally have a breakout board big enough that will run out of power before we run out of slots. At least I thought so <laughs> but you will see that later. So for the first part, the four cards were three GTX 1066 GB, as well as one MSI Armor 1080 you can see on the bottom. Now we'll fill it out with the rest of my Nvidia cards, which were waiting for this build. We have a Zotac 1080 Mini, an EFGA 1070 Ti, as well as an MSI 1050 Ti. We'll change the 750 Watt HP server PSU for an 1200 Watt PSU and this is also where I had to do a bit more of customization because the server PSU together with the new breakout board was actually too big for a dedicated place it has. So I'm taking it apart and removing some of the stuff we don't need like the plastic handle and then it fit. So in order to fill up your Octominer with cards we need some basics first. So on the board we installed RAM and an MSATA drive, which you can check out with timestamps in my initial review of the board. Secondly, we need at least two 6-pin connectors for the board itself and more if we have cards without external power like you'll see when we put in the 1050 Ti. Also, I decided to go for the Octominer case solution and I had to do a case mod because of the big cards. But all of that is in part 1 that this video doesn't go on for so long. If you calculate it, you'll notice that the 1200 watt power supply is very close to max power with our 8 card setup like this, at least at full load. We'll downclock them anyway so that we'll be safe. What I can already tell you from part 1 until now is that the Octominer rig has been more than stable, only shut down when I got too crazy with my overclocks. So now we are installing our cards, always laying out the cables first before putting the cards in. In part 1 I installed the big Asus 1060s on the top, but I will try now to put the smaller cards on top so that we have more space for airflow where the PSU is. Starting from the bottom to top we are inserting the cards and lastly you can now see me doing some cable management before we will start it up with 8 cards. I'm a Windows miner but from part 1 Win 10 and drivers were already installed, so nothing left to do is there? Well, now I have to confess something. I I failed. I was too confident because the 4 card setup ran so well from the beginning that I would not expect to run into problems. I was wrong. So now was the first time that I had problems with the Octominer board. From 8 cards only 4 were recognized and not the kind of not recognized which only need some restarts. The strange thing was that even a card like the MSI Gaming X1060, which was recognized in my 4 card build, was now not recognized, just because it was in another slot. So, hmm. here is what I actually meant when I said I failed. I already had everything in the case and tied it up, so I was not testing this while still out of the box. So this could have saved me a lot of time and a lot of fiddling around. Here are some positive words about Octominer support again. Daniel and Carl of the live chat were there for me on two different days when I confronted them with a lot of different questions about the board and helped with recommendations. And here I actually want to split the video into another part again because many of you just wanted to see me finish the build to see benchmarks and temperatures and I'll make a separate video about the whole troubleshooting process for people who have the same problem so that they also can go to one video and don't have to watch the whole thing here. Today we are running Equihash DSDM benchmarks and Nexus SHA-3 benchmarks simultaneously. For temperatures again I can say that I am more than happy with the 4 Thermaltake fans as intake and the 3 deltas as exhaust. You can see the fan mod in part 1. All cards except for the Armour 1080 were staying below 60 degrees Celsius. For Equihash we are getting around 2900 solutions per second. So many of you will notice that my overclocks are very modest. So I'm sure you could squeeze some more out if you wanted. But I didn't want to press the power supply too much and also I'm very happy with how cool the cards stay. I want to keep them long. 
for our Nexus on SHA-3, we are almost reaching 1 gigahash, just almost. So we were around 950 megahashes per second. So my friends, this is it for today and sorry for my sick voice and me being out of breath the whole video, but I really want to bring you weekly content about mining, so that's what I try to do. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Don't hesitate to comment if you have any questions or criticism what I could do better or ideas what you want to see next. Thank you. Bye.